Hello and welcome back. Okay, folks, it's time for me to do a little bit of painting now. So sit back and enjoy as I take you through several simple steps to help you paint a lovely monochrome scene. Now, quite a few people ask me, what is monochrome? And it's basically using one color tone all the way through the picture. I've chosen to use natural gray because that's a good example of how shadows and things work. So I've already painted a sky wet into wet and we've done lots of skies in the, uh, in the show before. So that's nice and dry. I've got a bit of masking tape, which I need to remove the stickiness from by sticking it to your forehead a few times or over your hands or something like that. And I'll place that just towards the bottom of the sky, straightish. And then I'm going to use a square or a flat brush. This is a, a, a 12 millimeter or like a half inch and use a medium to pale gray. And the first job is to paint in a bit of a tower. I'll probably go upwards with it then, I think, for that. So I'll paint in a bit of a block to start with. And then I'm gonna go across. Make sure I'm getting plenty of color and hopefully you'll recognize where this is surely. So I'm just going to place in one or two little bits of lines, little bits of detail with a square brush. I'll make it slightly wider at the top of that tower. Make sure it's nice and tidy. There we go. So it's starting to look like some kind of tower block. And then I'll add one or two more areas over this side. A square brush is quite handy for painting the uh, building silhouettes because it gives you quite a nice effect on the straight lines. And then I'm now going to move over onto a size six brush. Get the kitchen roll there. Freshen the paint up. And add, add a few bits of detail. So if you've not worked it out already, I'm painting a bit of a misty atmospheric day of Westminster in London. So this is the uh, Elizabeth's Tower, or Big Ben, as most people call it. And just adding little bits of detail every so often. And the more detail you put on something like this, the more effective it will be as a picture. Even as far as using a rigger brush to give you the detail areas. So little bits of dots and spots, lines and shadows and random windows and things like that. It really does bring the phrase to mind, every little helps when you do something like this. There we go. Probably get a bit of a buttress or something just down that side. I'll come back and add a few more bits in a second or two, but I'm just going to use a medium tree and texture brush, make sure it's clean, and then use the grey, the same grey. Bit of a stipple, but not too much colour. And if you know London, you'll know just at the side is embankment, there's all sorts of parks and things there. And there's all the street lamps and there's quite a few trees. So we'll give it a bit of a stipple over there. If you go slightly thicker with the grey, you can actually run a little bit of that, just slightly overlapping the buildings there, but not too much. There we go. And then I'll just come back to the six brush again, use the same grey. Because that's had time to dry, I'm just going to add a bit of the uh, kind of the clock. Now the paper's a bit damp for this, but it doesn't matter. It'll still give an impression. Now if I take the tape away, hopefully it won't rip. If it does start to rip, Put a hairdryer at the back of it. Now, obviously, that sits right next to the actual uh, Thames, 
So just to wrap things up, come back to a, a larger brush. In fact, we'll go for a size 20, actually. And I'm literally going to wet the water of this. So just make sure I'm just stopping just below the line. If you do get any bits of paint that ran down the back of the tape, you can wash them in at this point. So that's just a bit damp there. It's shiny. And then use the uh, size 6 and the grey. I'm just going to add a little bit of a reflection of some of the buildings there. So you can see it's going in pretty quickly. And using a bit of a dry brush, maybe a fraction thicker with the grey, but dry, dab it on tissue, and come straight down from the actual building with a few flicks that just run down. It helps to give that nice effect of uh, reflections going across. And you can see there. And then if you just sort of hover backwards and just add one or two ripples just to bring it forward a fraction there. It's going to go a teeny weeny bit darker just on the edge of the reflection as it sits right on the edge and make the clock a bit darker. Add one or two little bits of detail into this building. But I think we're just about there. Couple of little birds. Drop me brush, that's a good point to finish, I think. I hope that's inspired you to have a go at trying something new. And remember, we're always keen to see how you get on, folks. So why not share your work on the community section of the SIA website? Visit saa.co.uk for details. OK, while I tidy up my paints and palettes, let's cross over to the other side of the studio and see what secret spellbinding SIA professional artist Sharon Hurst has conjured up when we asked her to reveal what's in the box. Well, I suppose I have quite a few bits and pieces in my art box, just like you probably. I think my, one of my favourites has got to be this little Derwent rubber. It's fabulous for all the nooks and crannies. When I'm drawing a face and I need to be able to just take a little line out here and there, this is the monster that does it. And of course, it's wonderful because it's electric. So I don't even have to work very hard at it. How good can that be? One strange thing I do have is this. This is my comfort blanket, and I'm seen clutching this, as you probably will have noticed with some of the work. Um, it's just a cloth, but it's a nappy. It's 21 years old, and for this, my son will kill me. The thing about it is it is so absorbent, so very, very absorbent as cotton. I can mop up with this, and at the end of the day, my hands and my fingers are wrinkly with water. It's very, very good. Most of us, I suppose, have the credit card, don't we? We use this for our rocks, for spattering. I use that a lot for putting stars in the sky. Good effects for sand. Three different colours, good for sand. The other thing that I wouldn't be without, not ever, 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 is my masking fluid. The blue masking fluid, because it's so thin, it's so easy to use, that is just perfection for me. Special effects, salt. And of course I have two pots in my box because this is the fine pouring salt. I also have another, use dishwasher salt. It's wonderful. Special effects you can achieve with dishwasher salt. I'm sure you've all seen this, haven't you? This is the magic watercolour sponge eraser. It's absolutely fabulous. That will remove anything from anything, anywhere, anytime, any place. I'm ki not kidding you. James Bond's got nothing on one of those. You must have one of those for your box. Cocktail sticks. Do you use cocktail sticks for veins on leaves, petals, rose petals? Fab. Brilliant. I use it for the veins on my dragon's wings and just for sometimes fine little lines to give the impression of little grasses. It bruises the paper and the 
pigment rushes into the bruise and gives you a line. Don't forget though, use that, there's no coming back from it, you can't repair it. And finally, this is brilliant, that is a makeup brush. I bought it very, very cheaply. It's very, very soft. And the point is, when you're drawing and you're rubbing out, now we all make mistakes, don't tell me you don't, because I do, we all do. You need to just brush the rubbings from your paper. And of course, the more you're touching your paper, the more grease and perhaps perspiration you're putting on the paper from your fingers. So if you can use this and just sweep away the rubbings, it's great. And of course, masking fluid, you're also rubbing that away. So you've already touched the paper with your fingers there. Simply use a big brush to sweep it away, sweep the rubbings away. That really concludes all the very precious things that I have in my art box. There are many other bits and pieces, but they are the specials. Always a pleasure to have Sharon here in the studio. Well, it's time for us to take a little break now, folks, but join us in part three when we rejoin SAA professional artist Jan Gardner for the final leg of her vibrant voyage into the colourful world of mixed media in the concluding part of today's Try Your Hand Up project. We'll see you very soon.